Hey, I'm Alicia from MobilityMastery.com and today I want to talk to you about fibromyalgia and some of the patterns that I have seen consistently over the last 11 years since I started working with people in pain in 2008. I've kind of seen some patterns, right? Because I've repeatedly worked with people with fibromyalgia and then when I got online and started talking about fascia and pain, I got a lot of questions from people when I started engaging with some of the people who have fibromyalgia and started asking them questions to see if they were exhibiting some of the same you know, patterns that I was seeing in my in-person clients. And across the board, like I've, I've not had it, I've, I've literally not had a single person not corroborate my theory. <laughs> Doesn't mean they won't because it's not like I've talked to thousands and tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. Um, but I'm here on YouTube because I want to open the door to this conversation about fibromyalgia from a different perspective than most people are kind of talking about out there, at least medically. Uh, and if you have fibromyalgia, I'd really love for you to share you know, if you resonate or don't resonate in the comments below this video, because I think we can help the world, right? Like science is slow. It takes a long time to do enough scientific studies to actually prove something and then have it be considered relevant and factual in the Western medical community, right? And I don't know that I want to take the next 20, 30, 40 years to have this conversation. Um, and so just please know that this is a working theory of mine. I by no means think I'm 100% right or that this maybe applies to every single person with fibromyalgia. I just want to open that conversation, like I said, and actually share my theory with you guys and then talk to you about it to see if this is helpful for some of you because it's definitely been helpful for the people I've been working with in person. one major pattern with fibromyalgia that I've seen and it's every person that I've worked with who has fibromyalgia at some point usually in childhood they got the sense that it wasn't safe to feel their feelings or express them now it could be one or it could be both uh, if you are in the category of not feeling safe to feel your feelings right? Like, which is different than express them. Because you can feel your feelings and maybe not externalize them. Um, this is going to mean a more severe experience usually for you than somebody who is feeling their feelings but not expressing them. And I think we can kind of like, it, you know, it's possible for you to go in either direction. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean you're incapable of feeling anything. It just means that some, at some point, usually in your childhood, you learned through experience uh, that it wasn't safe, that something bad was gonna happen if you expressed yourself or if you felt feelings. Um, and I think it could be, you know, physical or emotional. So when I say feelings, I actually mean, um, to me, uh, emotions plus sensations equal feelings. <laughs> and they always kind of go together. So anytime you have a really strong emotion, you usually have a lot of physical sensation accompanying it, and the two combined equal feelings. So, for example, some of the clients that I've worked with have told me stories of when they were little, they would share, like, my knee hurts, or, you know, maybe they fell off their bike and scraped their shin, and they share that with an adult or two in their lives, and they're told, oh, you're, you're fine, um, it's not a big deal. and. I'm not demonizing the parents here, by the way. I definitely think a lot of us are unaware of the consequences of some of our words and actions on especially children. But nevertheless, what we do as children, since we're not highly conscious yet, we're not fully developed, we're learning about the world, right? We're learning about our place in it. You might create the belief that it's, you know, either your pain isn't real or it's not safe to share the pain that you feel uh, even if it's a physical injury or physical pain because it's getting, you know, denied by the people you're trying to share it with. So what are you supposed to do with that as a kid if you're sharing, hey, I, I hurt myself, and someone is telling you, no, you didn't, you're fine. Uh, so you kind of internalize it, right? And then maybe over time you learn, I'm not going to say it anymore um, because it's more painful to be, to feel the shame that I feel when I speak out about it 
than to actually just keep it inside and feel it in here. Um, and so I wanted to break this down into that, those two parts because physical pain is definitely one of those patterns you can be in, but then also, of course, emotions. So if you're sharing emotions with somebody in your life as a young person and you're shamed for them or made fun of or laughed at or told, you know, that you shouldn't feel the way you feel or that it was inappropriate to feel the way you feel or maybe you were even reprimanded or in an abusive situation as a child, uh, then you're definitely likely to create an internal safety mechanism that, you know, kind of starts creating an automatic pattern or a behavior in you where you learn not to share your feelings. So it could be physical, right? It could be emotional. And then of course it could be both because a lot of the time they're going together. And so a lot of the people that I'm working with uh, who have fibromyalgia now as adults, most of them are aware of this. When I say this, it's not like, how dare you suggest I have unhealed trauma? <laughs> most of them are like, yeah, that totally fits. Uh, and they, you know, kind of share with me what they've already been working on. So, you know, most people uh, who come to me with fibromyalgia are kind of like aware of the fascial component, but they're already doing like therapy or hypnotherapy or personal development or something to heal that other part of them. But because it got, you know, you know, contained physically and became an actual physical process that became automated, I do believe you have to work with it on the physical level too. So, I hope you're still with me. And if you are, I would love for you to share if what I just, you know, explained in terms of this working theory that I have, if it makes sense to you. And if you're somebody with fibromyalgia, does, does it resonate with you? I know it might feel a little scary to talk about this on the internet, especially YouTube. There are a bunch of trolls here, but this channel is usually pretty free of them. And if I see anybody coming in bullying anybody, boop, delete, you're gone. Uh, so I want this to feel like a really safe place we can have these conversations. Um, so please share below because the more we talk about this and the more consistently we maybe recognize the pattern worldwide, then the more empowered all of you as individuals are gonna feel if you're struggling with fibromyalgia and everything that comes along with it. Uh, because you're definitely not alone. There are a lot of people who have fibromyalgia and who have told me that this pattern fits their scenario. And so in my opinion, you need to kind of work with both the physical and the emotional to have a full solution. And if you want to actually, you know, take away from this video an action, if I were to give you one action to do to, you know, actually use what I just shared with you uh, for your own healing, what I would actually suggest that you do um, instead of going into storyland or verbally trying to process, which isn't bad and I highly recommend it, um, I'm just going to give you maybe something different that nobody's showed you to do yet, which is to use fascia release methods. Um, you, of course, you can find them here at Mobility Master if you want to use any of the techniques on this channel. But instead of your goal being fascia release, your goal is to just, you know, maybe watch the video, whatever it is. You can do your quads or your calves or your biceps. Um, watch the video, but then just so, so you know how to be safe and where to actually place the tool. But then your goal is to not release the fascia. Your goal is to contact your fascia and your nervous system and just feel what you feel. Allow it to be okay to feel whatever you feel, even if it's nothing. Um, even if it's simply physical sensation, no emotion, right? We're not going hunting for anything. We're not trying to make up some big assumption like you're going to have a huge emotional release here. Maybe you will. And that's great if you do, but the goal is to just create a safe space for you to feel in your body. That's it. Uh, and the more you kind of practice this, the more at home you're going to feel in your body, the safer you're going to feel to feel your feelings to begin with, and then hopefully express them. And so if you were to take a bonus action, it would be to find safe people or safe spaces where you can share your feelings. Um, your emotions, right? Your emotional experience as well as your physical experience um, to be heard, to be seen, to be acknowledged, to know that you matter, to know that your voice matters, uh, and to know that it's safe to be you. So that's my action for you if you want to take both of them or just one of them. And then again, if you would just share below if this 
is resonating, then maybe we can make a movement here to get more people this information so they can take action to heal at the root level instead of just kind of managing this condition that Western medicine says has no definable cause or solution. Because I would disagree with that. Uh, so share your thoughts below. Can't wait to read them. I'll definitely get in the comments and comment back to you. And if you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe. I have new videos that go out every single week. And if you join my email community, I've got some free resources for you, some PDF guides of my top five fascia release techniques and a free kinetics partner demo technique for the quads and some other stuff, depending on when you land on this video. Uh, so we're gonna put that link for you to, to join my email community below. So go ahead and do that right now. I can't wait to welcome you here if you're new and I will see you next time. So bye guys. Bye.